Welcome to the BearCast. I am your host, Cole Young. Hope you're having a great day. I know I am. I just listened to some great new music. Ariana Grande. Amazing. But anyways, if you like what you see today, make sure you like, you subscribe, you hit that notification bell to make sure you're up to date. Um, let's get to it. We got a really busy week ahead. And first off, we're going to talk about the NFL. If people don't know, I consider this the start of free agency, but there's been a lot of moves here recently. And so I want to go through it with you guys all and just kind of give you guys an update on just what is happening. And so for starters, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, um, Avante Maddox, um, Shadavius White, and Jordan Hoyer have all been cut. Yeah, they've been all cut. So it's interesting how all this is going down. But I overall seeing this, I mean, it makes sense that they're getting older. It Their time starting, you know what I mean? Starting to get worse. And I mean, I get it. It's, it's unfortunate. I really did not like the Quandre Diggs cut, cut as a Seahawks fan. But, yeah, I mean, I'm even though I'm wearing a Buffalo Bills hat. But, uh, yeah, also the Buffalo Bills. I mean, this is what you get when you sign Josh Allen. I mean, it's when you sign a big, lucrative contract to a quarterback, you might need to lose some pieces. And, I mean, they restructure Von Miller's agreement. He's making now $8 million a year, even though the most of his money now is incentives. So he's got to earn that. It's still not looking good. But um, yeah, there's that. Um, and there's also been some signings. Um, John Jono Smith, the former Falcons tight end, he got released by the Falcons. He is now signed with the Miami Dolphins. It makes sense. I mean, yeah, I know they have Julian Hill as their tight end, and Julian Hill's a former Campbell alum. I mean, still, you're gonna have to bring competition in there. I get it. Um, Zach Ertz signed a one-year deal with the Washington Commanders. I think it's a great deal. I liked what they're doing so far. Um, we're going to see what happens though with this team. Um, I could see them maybe moving up to the number one spot, which we'll talk more about that as event as that eventually gets going for sure. But yeah, there's that. And then also besides the bills signing Montez sweat and Tremaine Edwards, they just re-signed their star defensive back, Jalen Johnson, Jalen Johnson signed for a four year, $76 million deal. Um, Overall, I think it's a smart signing. I think Chicago Bears are in a interesting predicament. Um, they right now they have the potential to alter their franchise forever, whether it's keeping with Fields or going with Williams. They they got to make a decision. So I mean, if they decide to trade Fields and they get Caleb Williams, which I think is the most likely situation, which I disagree with. They you got to sign your best players. So why why not get Jalen Johnson, Montez Sweat, get all those guys already signed, and the defense is getting better too. So overall, I think this is a good signing. We'll see what happens, but um, yeah, I, I'm I like this signing a lot. And then also some other news: um, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, and um. And one other running, one other running, I'm forgetting, forgetting, but they're all in the market. So it is interesting how all this is going. Also, I forgot Russell Wilson and um, Justin Simmons have been cut. Justin Simmons was the one I was sh shocked about. We've talked about Russell Wilson. We talked about how he was already going to get cut. He got an unfair treatment in Denver, in my opinion, but he's right now currently in talks with the Steelers. He's actually flying to Pittsburgh today which I think is a good decision. I mean, I think if he does sign, I like this move. I think he fits the personality of Mike Tomlin, and I think that's something that needs to happen. So overall, I like the moves that are happening. I like what's going on so far. We're going to see what happens. I mean, I think a lot of these teams that are cutting these safeties, I think they're trying to get younger. I think Quandre Diggs kind of mentioned a quote, per se, of just how – Oh, look, the safeties are somewhat like the running backs. They're getting devalued. I mean, also, Austin Eckler is also going to become a free agent. That's something to be said there, too. But, um, yeah, no, we're going to see what happens. I'll keep on continuing to cover more about this because this it's going to keep on going. And we also got Kirk Cousins. There's going to be a lot of free agents. And so I'll keep you up to date with the more information. But overall, I see why they're doing it. And, I mean, the mock draft, I mean, the draft's coming up. I will do a 
a rundown before the draft starts of who I think is going to go. I actually did an article myself. I like doing these every year. I think it's a great it's, – it's like a great guessing game. It's like when you play poker or like blackjack and you're just like, you got a 15, sometimes you just got a hit. Sometimes you never know. You never know who's going to land where. Or you're going to be like, oh, that should have happened. And it didn't. Like last year, C.J. Stroud, Carolina should have taken, should have taken him, but they got Bryce Young. Here we are now. But, yeah, no, I, I'm liking, I mean, it's it's that time of year where it's just like, oh, who's going to go where? Who's going to go where? And all that. But, yeah, no. And I think Philly, too, they're going to have to rebuild their secondary. It's not that great. They're going to have to draft a little younger. So we'll see what happens. But um, I'm liking so far these decisions. So, yeah, now let's get into some – we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to go to the NBA now. NBA right now is in full swing, I tell you. It is actually very interesting how this is happening, but there have been some big-time games. Um, Victor Wembanyama is going crazy. The Houston Rockets are finally having something special, which the Houston Rockets defeated the Spurs, which I know it's not a great testimony. I mean, there's Wembanyama and then everyone else. But still, so as a Rockets fan, it just feels great. I mean, we got Fred Van Vliet. We're, get, we're getting better. We're starting to build something. And I'm just like, finally. Finally. I love them since Yao Ming and all that. And also James Harden is one of my favorite players of all time. But man, man, oh man. I am just happy that we're finally getting off the rocker. And we're finally, we're building something. And we're getting there too. We're getting there. And so... Yeah, but let's talk about one of the games that was on is the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Boston Celtics. Everyone has been high on the Boston Celtics. I have not, personally. I personally think Jason Tatum is, in a sense, like Joe Burrow. He does, when he needs to live up at his biggest moments, he doesn't. Jason Tatum, he's a choke master. And we saw it today. And we, I mean, the last three games haven't been well, but I want to highlight this game because. You let, in my opinion, a nobody who looked like... So, the Cleveland Cavaliers won by two points. 106 to 104. And it was a tight contested game. Tatum actually had a pretty good game overall. 26 points, 13 rebounds, had a double-double, and two assists. While um, Kristaps Porzingis, Porzingis, which I personally think he is the cheat code to all of why Boston's doing really well. They're number one in the Eastern Conference, people. Um, he had 24 points, nine rebounds, and three assists. In my opinion, I think that that's amazing. That is actually really, really good. And so you let a bona fide scrub who is his guess what his name is? Dean Wade. And I'm not talking about a bike of bone. He's not a scrub. He's not a scrub. He could play. He's an NBA. The dude can ball. I don't care if you're Kwame Brown. If you ever make it to like NFL, NBA, MLB, wherever you are, and you're a professional sport, you made it big time, whether you're the benchiest of the bench warmers. Um, Dean Wade had a total of 23 points, eight rebounds, and an assist. Dude was just lighting it up from three. I mean, I'm going to put up some clips and just show you, but the dude was just moving. He was moving, just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Dude looked like J.R. Smith. That's something to be said there. That is something to be said there. And I'm like, dang, who is this guy? This guy can ball. But I feel like this is an indictment to Jason Tatum. And I feel like that the media does overhype certain players. I'm not saying he he sucks. No, he's not. I actually think he's a pretty good player. But he isn't the best small forward. And I know he's put a lot of pressure on himself. And he tried to text Kobe Bryant and all, which I think is an insult to Kobe, in my opinion. But um, overall, though, I I feel like that he, yeah, no, he deserves he deserves a little less. Do you know what I mean? I don't see him as the franchise player for the Celtics. I mean, he has a lot of talent, but I don't I don't see a commanding presence like an Anthony Edwards, like a Shea Gilgis Alexander, like a LeBron James, like a Kobe Bryant, or even I'll even go to the extent of even a Michael Jordan. I don't see Tatum having that, I want the ball. Give me the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. I want to show this who who I am. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, no, the Celtics right now, they've gone on a crazy, crazy skid here. They destroyed the Warriors, and 
Warriors, by the way, are catching at the right time. Steph Curry, I mean, I have given him a lot of hate before, too. So we'll kind of deviate about that. Steph Curry is the second best point guard of all time. I mean, Magic's still number one. But Steph, though, is making a case for the greatest point guard of all time, in my opinion. Like, he has made dudes actually really well. Andrew Wiggins, supposed to be a bust. One of the best, like, two-way players in the game right now. Kaminga is Kamingaing right now, and he's just blossoming like a like a rose. I, I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. And Clay and Draymond, I mean, I don't know how they're still doing it, but yeah. And then CP3 is doing great in the second unit. So overall, though, I'm really shocked, though, about the Celtics. Everyone's saying, oh, well, they're going to be number one. I personally thought they they're still are the best team. They are 48 and 13, which I... I just, I'm still kind of shocked, but with the talent they have, I wouldn't be surprised if they choke. They choked before the finals, and it's just unfortunate for me saying that, but I like Chris Stapp's watching this. I like Jalen Brown. I like Derek White. Derek White has been very impressive, and I think the Celtics actually made the right move in training Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies. We all know what Marcus Smart can do. He is an upgraded version of Patrick Beverly, which I think is great. I think Patrick Beverly is one of the best defensive point guards of all time. I also think Marcus Smart is too. But if you think about it, Derek White has just been going off. Off like no day like tomorrow. And so overall, though, I'm the Celtics, they're not buying. But we'll move on from them. And we're going to actually talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. They're right now currently in the number one stand, uh, number one in the Western Conference. And so I want to give you the top three right now. So currently, the Celtics are number one in the Eastern Conference, followed by the Milwaukee Bucks, which the Milwaukee Bucks, they've been very impressive. I will admit that. They have gone undefeated so far since um, that three for seven when they have with Doc Rivers. I still think I still have questions with the Bucks. Uh, Damian Lillard's doing great. Giannis has been out. I think that's also part of it. I think Giannis having, you know, that uh, having that time and just trying to be ball dominant, I think it's hurt Damian Lillard. And now Damian Lillard has the ball. I think Damian Lillard is better when he has the ball. I think he is the number one. I just I'm still shocked how they're doing really well with just having two ball dominant people. And that's just my opinion. And then number three, I got the Cleveland. And then number three is the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavaliers, we've already talked about them. They're doing great. Donovan Mitchell, we'll see what happens next year. But if this is the year that they win now, they win now. And quickly on that, Evan Mobley, who is also a great player for them, is actually going to be out for over a week with an ankle injury, which is unfortunate, but just something to keep you up there. But he is out with an ankle injury. And then for the Western Conference, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves, which I'll tell you more about later, and involves with Carl Anthony Towns. It's not a good thing. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they have been very good. I love um, Sam Presti has been awesome. Even though they should be the Seattle Supersonics, they're doing really well. And I actually like Shea Gilgis Alexander. I think he's really, really good. Um, he'll eventually win an MVP, but I don't think it's his year. And then um, at the number three spot, we got the Denver Nuggets. I mean, it's Nikola Jokic, the Joker, and Jamal Murray, who I think is actually underrated as a superstar, in my opinion. I think he actually gets a lot of hate. I don't know why he does, but um, that's something to be said there. And so talking about it, but I know they, they're going to be in the mix for the finals. But let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves now. Carl Anthony Towns. I honestly think he's a great he's a great star. Um, Anthony Edwards, though, that's his team. But Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert have somehow made it work, and they are now number one. Carl Anthony Towns just tore his um, left meniscus, and he is actually going to get surgery. And this is a big, big deal. Um, no, I he's done really, really well. He's averaging over twenty points a game. He's having a lot of rebounds, and he's having a couple of assists too. I mean, it's Anthony Edwards' team, but that's his. I mean, they consider Carl Anthony Towns the Batman and Anthony is the Robin. I'm going to say the opposite. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns compliments Anthony Edwards more than he does if it's vice versa. And I love Carl Anthony Towns' game. And, yeah, there will still be Rudy Gobert. And he's a menace on the defensive side. But it's not the same because Carl Anthony Towns has that offensive firepower. And you're actually losing – that for sure and so overall though i think it's interesting how all this is going down but talking about it this is a huge loss 
because Oklahoma City, um, Denver, and I'll even say the LA Clippers, who have been actually very, very good. Paul George has stepped up. I mean, Kawhi's doing well. There are a lot of good teams. The New Orleans Pelicans, they actually, Brandon Ingram, who I actually really like, stepping up. And I mean, the Warriors, they could very well be in the sixth seed. I mean, the Minnesota, I mean, they'll still be in the playoffs, in my opinion, but it's going to be tougher for them now to maintain the number one seed. I actually don't think they will be the number one seed. I think it's going to be Oklahoma City that's going to be it because this is a horrible time to be injured because like this is where a lot of the teams start catching fire now. You've seen with the Warriors, you've seen with the Knicks, you've seen with all these other teams that they're starting to catch on fire now. I don't know why it is, I mean, yeah, there's the in-season tournament and all. It's just, you know what I mean? It's like you're getting the rust off, and once you get the rust off, this is when real basketball starts to begin. This is the time when real basketball starts to begin. That's when more eyes start looking on you and saying, oh, this team's legit. Oh, this team's a scrub. We're not going to pick them to win the finals. But, yeah, no, I hope Minnesota can win in a sense because they had the Kevin Garnett, and I don't know why, but they didn't win a finals at all with them. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, I like this team, and it's it's really sad. It's really sad that he got injured, and I hope it's a speedy recovery. A speedy recovery, because he is a very crucial piece. All right, so done with the NBA. Let's stick with basketball, but we're gonna go in the college basketball lane. If you don't know what's happening right now. Tournament, tournament, tournament. That's all I got to say. Um, also, the, and we're getting to the end of also the of the, SC, um, the regular season. It's blanking out there. But um, Tennessee and Arizona are your regular season champions in the Pac-12 and in the SEC. Tennessee for the SEC, Arizona for the Pac-12. I think it's great. Arizona's been good, even though they've lost to... Um, Washington State back to back, which they just lost to Washington, which is interesting. The um coach is right now on the hot seat for the Huskies. And so I mean this saves his job for right now. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I mean, Oregon, I mean, they're not doing too well right now in the basketball lane. But we'll see what happens though. Um, I am interested to see what's going to happen. But yeah, um the A Sun tournament. Well, that's what I want to talk about the main um emphasis on is the Atlantic Sun has been going crazy. If you don't know, Austin Peeves has been on a tear, which is a small school in Tennessee, but they're doing really, really well. I'm like, dang, like this is good. They defeated um Northern Alabama. They've defeated um and a couple of other teams by literally less than seven points. One of them was in three points. The other was two points in overtime. And the coach was so excited that he was actually yelling and like, let's go, all of that. And I'm like, oh, my. Lipcomb, they won in the buzzer beater, even though they lost. Um, Stetson has been a very close. Which they were number two seed. And it got even crazy where the number one seed lost to the number 10 seed. Something to be said there. This Watch out for this conference in March Madness. They are catching on the right time, and the championship game's actually coming this Sunday, where it's Austin Peeves versus Stetson University. I got my money on Austin Peeves. I'm sorry. Stetson looks like they've been neck and neck there, like, on a turbulent function. Like, I got Austin Peeves winning this thing, and I hope they go into the tourney because I could see them as a dark horse team. Like, they actually are doing really well, and the ASUN has just been competitive. Competitive, competitive, competitive. I mean, they beat... Northern Florida by three, and Northern Alabama by six. They're doing really, really well. And I'm looking at this like, watch out now. Watch out. Yeah, I mean, Stetson, again, they've just been stagnant. But this, it's going really, really well. And so, yeah. And then also, some other things to mention, and just to tell you more, we're going to continue more into college basketball, especially when we get into March Madness. But I want to mention there are other tournaments that are starting today. So make sure you keep an eye out for the Big South, Missouri Valley, the CAA, the Southern Conference, the Western Conference, which has San Diego State, Boise State, Gun, um, I think, yeah, Gonzaga, um, the Summit League, and the Ohio Valley Conference. And there, there are more of the smaller teams. I mean, Campbell's going to play Moms tomorrow, which I am really rooting for Campbell. I mean, Alamada right there. You know, I mean, right there. You know what I mean? But um, 
I mean, I'm so I'm so going there. I, I confuse myself with Oregon, but still, that's my school though. Campbell's gonna do great. I mean, they're catching on at the right time too. And um, yeah, no, watch out for these games and keep a close eye because there's gonna be a lot of friction, a lot of fun. It's gonna be crazy. I mean, this is this is the time of year where where the smallest of small teams, it's David being Goliath. This is what's happening right now. And we're going to see more of this as we get into March Madness. And I'll do more of that. And to be honest, I'll actually do a March Madness special where I'll just talk about who I think is going to win. Even though, in my opinion, I don't think that will be 100% wrong. But it's still fun to try. You know what I mean? But, yeah. And lastly but not least, let's talk about um, Caitlin Clark. Kate, Caitlin Clark, if you have not known, she is now the main NCAA record for – she broke over – she's now – she beat Pistol Pete Maravich as the all-time score for men's and women's basketball. And I just want to say congratulations. That is awesome. I mean, Caitlin Clark, I've seen her play. I personally, I, I mean, the greatest I've seen with my two eyes is still Sabrina. But she can play, though. She got that range like Steph Curry. I mean, she was shooting it like no day like tomorrow. She is a bona fide star. Um, she is going to declare for the WNBA after this. And I think this is a great opportunity for the WNBA to capitalize on their market, per se, and grow more. Because this is another good opportunity. You got Sabrina. I mean, you got Brianna. There are, WNBA now is starting to become more legitimate as a sports franchise. I mean, yeah, there's always been the jokes and all that. But they're now really starting to, you know, the movie Perks of Being a Wallflower? They're really starting to become off of that wallflower and becoming their own butterfly. And I think this is a great opportunity for the WNBA to expand their revenue, to expand more of what they're doing, and actually expand more into certain teams. I mean, I don't know if they have a team in Tennessee they could get. There, uh, there is a great market opportunity, especially for her, because if you put her, I mean, Indiana's right now currently to have the number one pick. Yeah, you could have Larry Bird and a couple of other players come by and just be like, oh, look at but if you like, if the WNBA wants to be smart, you put her in a New York or in LA. You got people like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Wiz Khalifa, or maybe you could even get Stephen A. or Spike Lee to get up in New York. I'm just saying that would be great. That would be great for the WNBA, and I think it's actually much needed too because they're actually starting to become more legitimate. And I know the NBA's had their problems, but the WNBA, if the WNBA rises up. That would be awesome. So, yeah. If you like what you saw today, make sure you like, subscribe, you hit the notification button. Thank you again. You guys have a blessed week and stay smooth.